Entry into the Royal Air Force, the B-29 was renamed the Washington. Whether seen in British or United States markings, the recognition points remain the same. We'll run through these points in diagram. First, head on. Note the circular fuselage and four radial engines centrally mounted. Also the mid-position wing with marked dihedral the flat tail plane and high central fin and rudder. In the plan view, the overall shape is distinctive. Mark specially that all taper is on the leading edge of the wing, ending in the blunt tips. Also the trailing edge, broken by the inboard engine nacelles. The tail plane also has marked leading edge taper. Finally, the slender fuselage with its gentle taper to the rear. From the side, the whole shape stresses the taper on the underside rear fuselage, accentuated by the predominant feature, the high fin and rudder with large dorsal fairing. Having covered the fundamental lines of the Washington, the following airborne views will give you the feel of the aircraft and a knowledge of the changing combination of shapes seen in the air. This view reveals the long fuselage and clearly shows the inboard nacelles breaking the trailing edge. When viewed from a stern, the tall fin and rudder dominate the picture. It is interesting to mark the relationship between fin and rudder and tail play. An important feature to remember is the gentle slope of the dorsal fairing into the long tubular fuselage. In close-up, it is even clearer and suggests a sitting position. This fin and rudder looks bigger than ever, doesn't it? Well, it is. It belongs to the B-50. Its disproportionate shape upsets the balance completely. Compared with the Washington, the fairing sweeps sharply into a standing up position and is one of the most substantial differences between the two aircraft. The longer nacelles of the B-50 present the second main difference. And as in the case of the fin and rudder, just remember that 50 is larger than 29. The third main comparison is in the extension of the four engine nacelles beyond the trailing edge of the broader cord wing. It can be seen even more clearly in this close-up. Basically, when seen head-on, the B-50 and the Washington are the same, except for the taller fin and rudder in the B-50. Recognition will be made easier if the B-50 is fitted with its external wing tanks, which tend to give the aircraft a six-engine appearance. Let's leave the B-50 and go on to the Tu-4, Russian-built version of the B-29. As you see, it is identical with the Washington and is the standard Soviet long-range bomber. So much for the Washington. By now, you should have enough information to be able to identify this aircraft under most conditions. Remember the outstanding differences. And from whatever angle you see it, you should be able to say Washington, or equally surely, B-50.